Hey guys, welcome back. I'm going to go over another game today, and this game that we're about to go over is another example of how not to respond to the bishop's opening with black, and um, it's another example of how quickly games can just totally unravel here. So, we're going to start with e4, e5, bishop, c4. This is a starting position. Knight f6 by black is a solid move, and after d4, black plays knight to c6. Now, the, the proper move here, the best move, is to, to take the pawn on d4. But he plays knight to c6. Um, we could play d5 here with our pawn kind of kicking the knight away. The problem with that is, first of all, it kind of cuts off our diagonal here for the bishop, which I, I don't want. And also, it's probably going to invite the knight to come attack the bishop, which in, in which case he'd probably move the bishop somewhere else. Um, so this isn't bad for white but not the way I want to play it. So I play knight to f3. And now this is probably black's first mistake here with the check on b4 with the bishop. So this kind of breaks one of the, you know, fundamentals of chess early in you know, opening chess. There's no point in giving a check with the bishop when it can be easily blocked by a pawn here. So, um, you know, he allows me to push this pawn forward. He allows me to create this nice pawn chain here and you know he's got to move his bishop out of the way so he doesn't he doesn't really accomplish much with this and second mistake he moves the bishop back to a5 looks like a pretty natural move uh first of all this actually though isn't really pinning a piece usually you know sometimes in the roy lopez or a lot of other positions you have a bishop pinning a knight for example to, to either a queen or, or the king in this case there's just a pawn here that's defended so not really accomplishing much. And the bigger issue with the bishop to a5 move is the fact that the bishop needed to be on d6. Because you could, you might be able to see here that we've got two attackers on this pawn. Right now, black's only got one defender. So if he brings the bishop back to d6, he would add a defender here and, you know, keep the position intact, at least, temporarily. So after black moves the bishop backwards... I went and grabbed the pawn on e5, and again, just because of what I was talking about, black can't take this because he's going to lose the knight. So he's got to move this this knight here on f6 now, somewhere. Um, the best move for black would be to play knight to g4, kind of adding some pressure on the e5 pawn here, in which case white would play bishop to g5, attacking the queen. And it gets a little complicated, but this is still a good position, a winning position for white. Not winning, but good. Um, but it's playable for black. Uh, they might push this here, and this is going to get our pawn out of the way at least. And then after this pawn to be takes, we can go back here. We can go back here. Uh, but, you know, that didn't happen in this game. Black's also... The second best move for black is actually to retreat all the way back to g8. But again, not a very, not a very human-looking move there. So... What is the human move? What move did black play? Black just goes ahead and grabs his pawn on e4, which looks to be undefended, which is a pretty uh, logical move. But this this leads into a little trap in the bishop. So it's very common in the bishop's opening. And um, if you want, you can pause the video here and think about what move you would play as white to capitalize on the knight coming to e4. And if you need a little help, you can just try to think of a move that accomplishes two purposes at once it's a double threat okay so pause the video think about it okay so the correct move here and it is very typical in the bishop's opening queen to d5 so this creates this battery here on the diagonal and this is threat this threatens checkmate on the next move in addition to that it's also threatening the knight here on e4 which is undefended so that, that's where the dual threat comes from. Um, the best move for black here is to actually totally give up on the knight. Obviously, checkmate is more important than your knight. So the best move is to castle. Or castle for black here. But uh, my opponent tries to accomplish two things at once. He tries to take care of the knight under attack and also the checkmate threat with one move. He plays knight to g5. And as you might be able to tell, this move does not work. For a couple reasons. So, first of all, we've got two pieces already bearing down on this g5 square. And after I went and took with the bishop, 
now we've again got two simultaneous threats at the same time. We're number one attacking the queen, and number two, because we removed the defender of that f7 square, which was the knight, we're again threatening checkmate in one. So, again, the best move for black here because of the checkmate is to ignore the queen. So at this point, the game is the game is for all intents and purposes it's over. Um, there's no way for the queen to escape this move and also defend checkmate at the same time. So castling again is the best move for black or maybe moving the rook to f8 to defend mate. But black plays f6. So he says, I'm trying to save my queen. But unfortunately, he overlooks the checkmate threat on f7. And that was the game. So this was a nine move game. One of the fastest games I think I've ever played. And, um, you know, it's pretty clear that Black did not play well in this game. But some of the moves are fairly, you know, logical moves. Uh, I would say taking this pawn is something, you know, I've seen quite a bit. And this isn't a beginning level player. This this player, believe it or not, is a 1400 or so on, on chess.com that I was playing. And he, he fell for this. Um, and I think after dropping the knight, he probably realize that the game was mostly most likely over um which might explain this move here but you know overall very quick game uh hope you guys enjoy that and i'll see you next time